Hey YouTube, Lantai Kandras there doing another action figure review and today we're having a look at the Hero Hacks or Highly Articulated Character Kit System uh, by the good old folks at Boss Fight Studios and this is Ming the Merciless so if you're not familiar with the Hero Hacks uh, I think it was called something else actually uh, it was the hack system it is a kind of basic three and two quarter inch scale figure line that has uh, normally they seem to do mythic kind of or not mythic but um they do like orcs goblins uh, knights and stuff like that this they're also expanding into they've expanded into other lines such as Bucky O'Hare there's supposed to be coming out with Umbrella Academy figures at some point down the line I think if I remember correctly correctly I believe those are from them I could be getting mixed up with Haya Toys but I think it's the Hero Hacks that are doing the Umbrella Academy line so if you're a fan of the TV show they're supposed to be doing figures of that and they're also doing oh what's that one with the white rabbit and the kind of dog cop thing uh, it's based on a video game Sam and Max they're doing figures based on those at some point as well so for accessories he doesn't come with a lot but before I do the accessories we'll have a quick look at the box so the box is quite nice because it's one of those uh, collector uh, style packaging and what that means is it's designed in such a way that you can open it up at the top here Oh, hang on, let me angle that up a touch. You can open it up here at the flap, slide this card back out, and you won't lose the, you know, won't rip the blister or anything off the packaging because it's uh, collector orientated packaging. So there is a brief write up for Ming the Merciless here. They also have a Flash Gordon figure based on, I believe it's his comic book appearances, which is where this Ming comes from as well he's based on the comic book appearance um i do believe they have a movie style flash i don't think they do a movie style ming yet i think necker are the only ones that have a movie style ming but necker also has the defenders of the earth style ming and another uh the original is it mattel toy line or is it kenner steve or was it even Earthle? The old toy line anyway, the old three and quarter inch toy line version of Ming. Whereas this is more based on his comic appearance, I believe. So the right up for this is absolute ruler of Mongo, the dictator whose reach spans a galaxy, able to raise legions to his bidding, the dread leader who demands fealty fealty from the most villainous criminals in the universe. There are one. There are none who can hope to match the might of Ming the Merciless when it comes to sheer evil. A cold-hearted leader with a flair for intricate plans and plots, a master strategist and genius, all of those who attempt to defy him are doomed to failure and endless pain. Ming has access to Mongo's vast standing army as well as a menagerie of fearsome creatures and an arsenal of the latest technological advanced weaponry. So far, the only person to delay his schemes of for absolute domination has been the heroic Flash Gordon. Even, eventually, even Gordon's luck is bound to run out. The human Dale Arden has attracted the eye of Ming. Her beauty and steely defiance of his wishes amuses the Emperor. Soon, very soon, uh, the Emperor Ming will have achieved his present goal of ruler of all he surveys. But with his unquenchable thirst for war and conquest, there are is no limit to his ambition or aviance avias avias uh i probably butchered that but yep this is the boss fight studios version of ming so you can see here there's they show the prototypes for ming and flash i believe the flash looks a little better than the image on this in person if you're looking at, if you already have one i had him pre-ordered and unfortunately, I think I cancelled the pre-order because I had to yeah, pick up other stuff and I forgot to reorder them again. Um, they also do, uh, they're doing a Zorro from, I think, the 
live action kind of TV serial style and the comics. And they are also doing the Phantom down. As far as I know, there's three versions of the Phantom. There's the kind of purple suit version. Uh, there is a female version of the Phantom, which I believe is supposed to be his daughter. And then there is a version of the Phantom in a kind of a slightly more grey than the purple uniform. And he comes to the horse. So there is that. So on to the figure. So accessory wise, he doesn't come with quite a lot of accessories. He does come with some uh, interchangeable hands, which are just open palm. He comes with a Hero Hacks display base, which has four pegs on it. So you have options of where to put him on the base. He does have peg holes on both feet, just so you can do that. Weapon wise, you can move his sword. Now, I believe the sword is exactly the same as the one that comes with the flash. Can you see the sword? You can see the sword. I think the pistol and the sword are the same ones on flash. Just done in a different colour. So, he comes with this very nice sword. Which I drop. Uh, he comes with this very nice sword. With a gold, more kind of bronzy gold handle. And a dull uh, metallic silver. For the blade which is quite nice and then he comes with this laser pistol or ray gun in this in that same kind of bronzy gold color which is kind of nice i believe the one that comes with uh, flash is done in silver same with the sword he does actually have a sheath or well it's not a full sheath it's just like a a clip for holding the sword so when the sword does go in it can be stored but it you can see the blade exposed, so it's not a full sheath that covers it. He does have quite nice articulation. Now, I do believe the cape piece is a separate piece. But the way it's designed is his collar and cape are all one piece. So if you were to pop the head off, this whole section would come off with the collar piece. So there is that. It's a fairly solid cape. It's kind of... It's not a kind of soft goods and it's not kind of, it is pliable, but it's not completely, you know, it can get in the way of articulation, especially on this uh, left hand. His, the cape drapes over the right shoulder a little bit more so, or over the right shoulder a little bit less, so you can get full range of movement on it. So you can see the arm ro rotates all the way around. You can rotate up that way. He has single joint elbow. With a pretty good 90, just about 90 degree bend. And it has a rotation. He does have a wrist rotation and he has a hinge. Now, I believe that the cuff parts are a separate part. So if you were to pop out the hand, which I don't really want to do without heating up. You pop out the hand and you can pop in the, uh, the spare hands, which are these kind of almost gesturing hands they're not really outstretched in the you know they're not a relaxed palm hand they're more of a gesture to come here or a pointing gesture depending on which way you have them so there is that you get a left and a right version of that hand his waist has a ab crunch now i can't tell if he has a lower he does he does have a waist swivel as well it's hidden by this belt the belt is similar to the one that you can see on on Flash. It's kind of similar design with this kind of solid piece in the center and then these kind of ruffles on the outer side. The difference with Flash's one is the belt buckle is completely different, but it's a kind of similar design. And where Flash has, or where Ming has this kind of draping piece at the side, Flash doesn't. Flash still has a thing for holding the sword. But in addition, Flash also has a pistol holster, which this guy is lacking. Which is a shame, it would have been nice to have a pistol holster. But it is what it is. I just, I'm pretty sure it's more accurate without having it. It's just, he it looks like he has nowhere he can store his pistol unless he's holding it all the time. So there's a little bit of a downside to him. And he can hold his pistol. You just have to get it through the, get the trigger finger into the trigger of the pistol properly so if we can just do that on screen you can see he holds the pistol quite nicely 
and you can hold the sword in the offhand. Although it does look like he's, it's designed so he can draw his sword with his right and probably supposed to hold a pistol on his left. So just get the sword into his grasping hand. Bear with me a moment. There we go. Just have to get in. In fact, do we have it that way on the yeah, you have the pistol on the in the right or sorry in the left hand on the box. So it is looks like he's designed to uh carry the sword right handed and pistol left handed. His gauntlets do have a uh, that kind of gold on it as well, the bro bronze gold on both of them. And he has that kind of bronzy gold on his belt buckle as well. If we just flip around the back, you see there is a screw hole where his hips are joined together. He's, the rest of his articulation is... Actually, what is interesting is you can see, if you can see that, is his cape is on a peg. So it is designed to peg into this hole on his back. If I can just get it in. Come on. It's probably not wanting to go in, but it is designed so that it pegs in and it doesn't stick out as much. There we go. So it is designed to hold that. His head is on a ball joint, so he can get some good left and right kind of angled poses. Uh, his collar does get in the way of his head movement. You can't really do a 360, but you still get a good kind of range of movement on it. His head is actually kind of nicely sculpted. Again, he has more of that bronzy color. He has what looks like a little dragon on the top of his helmet, which is kind of cool. Um, I believe this is supposed to be the same creature that was in the Defenders of the Earth uh, cartoon series that he rides on, and I can't remember the name of it. It's like, a, I think it's like Manglor or Monglor or something along those lines. It's kind of similar to the name of the planet. And then he has four kick he can kick back but his cape does kind of get in the way but he can kick forward quite a bit he has the thigh swivel he has dual jointed knees he has a rocker articulation in the ankle so his his ankle is like a ball joint so you can rotate around at the joint by the the leg and then he has a rocker ankle by the foot and then as mentioned those um peg holes for the base so if i just grab the base and see if i can squish his foot onto the peg hole of one of these things just to get him to stand so i think they're different sizes from the looks of it so might only design be fitted onto one of them bear with me a moment let's try this that one looks very large uh, in theory, he should fit on it. I actually haven't bothered to put him on it, so it should be just a matter of pressing him in. There we go. You can fit him onto his base, so he does fit on the base quite nicely. And it will probably be a struggle to get him off. Oh. So his legs are articulated enough that he can get some good range of movement and good posability out of. So he is quite a nicely designed figure now i would imagine that just going by the looks on the box that the flash shares a lot of construction let me see if we can get him to stand properly there we go so have to get his ball the ball down on his feet so I flip around the back of the box i imagine from the waist down the legs are probably similar with the you know just done in the different colors Boots are different. It looks like he Flash has more. Um, he doesn't have the pointed boots, but I'd imagine the arms and torso would have some similarities, but and some differences. So they probably did use some bits between the two of them, but overall they are quite nicely done. So you just get him to stand. I'll bring in a few figures for size comparison. So the only other boss fight figures I have at the moment to hand are these guys, which are supposed to be in the same scale, but they're the Bucky O'Hare Toad Troopers. So I have one of those. We have the Owen Grady from the Jurassic World Dominion line. I'm bringing in old Stormtrooper from Star Wars. These are one of the older versions. We'll bring in the Captain Eagle 
from the Eagle Force line, which I have still have yet to do a review on, which I haven't got around to doing that yet. I'll bring in a regular 25th anniversary G.I. Joe. This is one of the earlier versions of Lady J. Oh, there goes the Stormtrooper. So, I'm bringing Lady J. Just get her to stand. The old Stormtrooper to stand. And just because he looks like he fit, would fit in with this sort of the garish colours that Ming comes in. This is the Teen Titans. Funko reaction figure of Nightwing. And do I have anyone else? No. Let's bring in a Haya Toys Predator figure in the form of Wolf since he's close by and I reviewed him not too long ago. Put him in behind, he should be a little bit taller than everyone so you can see the scales. As he knocks everyone over, which is typical. You sweep the stand and get me to stand back up again. But all in all, he's a pretty cool figure. Um, if you're not a fan of the, of the franchise, then you know you can easily pass on him. But I think he looks pretty interesting. He's kind of cool. What I would love to see them do. But I know it's probably a long shot it would be to do one of those kind of, um, kind of, what would they call them, ray ships kind of thing, or the big ships that they would fly with the different, um, you know, the kind of spaceships that they had, but they kind of had that really weird retro submarine vibe with the fin fins and stuff on them. That would be kind of cool. But overall, it's not a bad figure. Uh, just for a... Because I had to take measure there, we'll just bring it in for the height. You see, he stands just around the four inch, maybe just a hair over with that headpiece on his helmet or on his hat. If it's a hat or helmet, I'm not too sure. But overall, he's a really good figure, and I do recommend picking him up. I got this guy from Big Bad Toy Store. He should be available from there, and he should be available from the big, from the Boss Fight Studio store as well. So. There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Hero Hacks, Ming the Merciless, the Tyrant from the Flash Gordon TV series, well, the Flash Gordon comic series is what he's based on, I would imagine. But overall, he's not a bad figure. Um, he does look the part for a evil emperor, if you wanted something for like that, for doing some crossover stuff. And overall, he's not bad. So I hope you enjoyed this video review. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Cheers, guys.